So here it is, it's the end of March, so it's officially spring, but it's definitely feeling like winter and it's windy, but this is gonna warm you up as I talk about Atlas, the D90 by Heldeberg. Well, I'll say good afternoon, guys. My name is Paul Potratz, and today we're going to talk about a D90 that uh, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, everyone that's seen it has just fell in love with it. And I've had some couples here that were looking at some other defenders and talking about doing designs, and they saw this one, and they've offered a lot of money to be able to buy it, but I had to tell them over and over, Dare Mid, that's my client, He's been waiting for a while and he made the statement that he said he would never sell it. In fact, he wants to be buried in it when his day comes. So uh, it, it, is, it is really cool and it's kind of hard to explain what's so different about this versus Maxim, which you can see Maxim on Helderberg.com, which is a version much like this. But thankfully, Dermid said, Paul, I want you to put some design cues into it to make it a one of a kind. So let's talk about that today. The first thing you'll notice is the headlights. So these are hand-built headlights and a headlight that I use a lot. Uh, it's a headlight that was on Enzo. It's a headlight that I, I, that I think I'm gonna use on all of the builds. Reason being it's different, it's unique, and it's handmade. But I love how it has the broken halo. So it makes it completely different than anything else. And then the rear of the bucket is black versus the rear of the bucket being chrome. So it gives a nice contrast. So the headlights are, I think, fantastic. But we'll move on to the headlight surrounds, which is really a staple you see in a lot of the Helderberg builds. But this is a billet aluminum, and then we CNC it with the Helderberg logo. And then we have the clear H LED lights, which are for the turn signal, the marker light. Moving on, we did an aircon nose. The aircon, what that is, it's a bump out. We do this to be able to create more, actually more space for the air conditioning condenser and the fan and all that. But it also just gives it a nice little impact where it brings it out. It's, it's just a design cue. And then we did the different grill, which I call this the barbecue grill, which I definitely like versus some of the other grills that I won't even get into. And then we put the cast alloy Land Rover badge. And then talking about the bumper, which is probably one of my favorite bumpers. And this took some discussion because Dermot said, oh, I think I need a winch. And I was like, you need a winch or you want a winch? Because it's completely two different things because a lot of times when you put the winch on there, it's never really used. And these vehicles are highly capable to be able to get out of, you know, get into and get out of almost anything. So it's rare that you would need a winch and you really don't want that weight of the winch on the front. So this is what we call the race bumper, aluminum bumper, but it's very thick aluminum and the welds are absolutely superb, beautiful. Bumper is also handmade too, as you expect on any Heldeberg. The vast majority of everything is handmade. And then the red tow hooks, which give it a little bit of contrast to color. And then moving to the bonnet, I would say 99% of the builds, I do the Puma bonnet. It's not needed, but I like the design of it where it actually has the hump. But this one, you'll notice something a little different that you could also see on... Um, Bosco actually had it, and a couple others had it too. Like, I believe Dario had it too. And this is the louvers. So the louvers, these are hand cut. Again, you're gonna see everything being done by hand, but these are hand cut and they serve no function. Uh, in fact, they create more work for you because when it's, you know, when the, when the seasons start to change and the pollen's coming, well, you're gonna get a lot of dust and pollen on top of the motor, and when it rains, you're gonna get water on top of the motor. So no cooling effect, but really, this is a design cue back to the old classic Jaguar, the classic Bugatti, and it's just something that says bespoke even more. So let's talk about the engine. <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> gets me all worked up. <clears throat> so let's talk about the engine. It is a 300 TDI. TDI is a turbo diesel engine and it's fuel injected. So I, I've had a lot of people say, oh, why don't you do the Corvette motor? Why don't you do the Cummings motor? Quite simply, the vehicle wasn't built for it. It wasn't engineered for it. 
and one would think, oh, I'm going to put a Corvette motor in there. It's going to make it more reliable. The fact of the matter is it makes it less reliable because the Corvette motor is such a big motor. It needs a lot of cooling and there's, you just can't put a big enough radiator in here and a big enough. It's like you're stuffing this huge, massive engine into a truck that wasn't designed for it and a huge, massive engine that needs a lot of cooling space. And there's not enough space here to be able to get a big enough radiator in there. I mean, think about how big a Corvette is in the front and the way the radiators are designed. So you create more problems because, again, the vehicle was not engineered for it. And you have to be, I mean, absolutely insane to think that you want to be driving down the road in a build like this doing 85, 95 miles an hour. It just doesn't make sense because you don't have ABS brakes. You don't have crumple zones. You don't have, you know, airbags and the list goes on, but I won't harp on it. 300 TDI has been performance tuned. It has a VNT turbo. It has a, a very special cylinder head. It has an over large intercooler. It has a custom built injection pump. It has a custom designed exhaust system, three inch stainless steel all the way through. This thing can exceed the speed limits, but again, it wasn't designed to be a highway machine. If you want a sports car, buy a sports car and then have your Land Rover Defender that's unique and classy and use it for what its intended purpose was. So that's the engine. It is made it to a five-speed manual transmission. Just so you know, Land Rover never made an automatic transmission. So yes, you can do an automatic, but you're creating kind of a fabrication to get that automatic transmission. And when you do that, you lose the, the horsepower you lose that extra speed, that extra torque that that manual transmission is going to provide. And this is definitely a driver's car. There's something magical about shifting gears and just feeling that versus you doing the automatic transmission. It's just like, ah, really? And it will also decrease the value of it when you do the automatic because the vast majority of everyone, even if they've never even driven a manual transmission, that's what they want. The gearing's been changed, so the front and rear differentials are completely different, uh, meaning that the gearing's designed for these tires. So now let's move over to the side and let's talk about some design cues that you may or may not have noticed. So the first thing you're gonna notice on the side view, of course, are the arches. So these are hand laid, meaning these are custom made. So they're a little wider to cover up most of the poke of the tires. And then you'll see the Toyo Open Country tires. And these are some very nice tires. They do really well on the road. They're not as noisy as like the Maxxis Trepidor that I normally use. So comfortable tire, all purpose tire. It's a, it's a great tire. It is a mud terrain tire. And this is a 315-75-16. I didn't do the bead locker. I did the alloy here, which is a really good looking wheel. And then this one does have uh, performance brakes on it. It's not the big red brakes, but it is the performance brakes. So calipers are oversized and so are the rotors on it. Moving on to it, I mean, of course, being a Helderberg, the wings are completely new. So these are new because if it's not new, you never get the waves out of it. Of course, the hood is new. Billet aluminum work here on the vent. And then you'll notice the external roll bar. So you have the option when you do this, you can do an external roll bar where it comes out like this in front of the windshield, or you can do the internal roll bar. So this is a six point roll cage. It is functional. It is, there's cuts here and it goes all the way to the frame where it's bolted again. And then you'll see all the billet work on the hinges. Again, you'll see this on all Helderbergs where we do the, the aluminum hinges that are hand milled on that. Uh, the color, which is a color that I really like a lot, you're thinking, oh yeah, Paul, it's white. It's not just any white, this is Arctic white. So last week, if I had this parked in the snow, you would be able to see that it's not really truly white, but it's a very light blue. When you look at it on pictures and you look at it on person, like where I'm standing here looking at it, it looks like it's just a bright white, like maybe a Fiji white, but it's not. It's a light blue. But again, you can only see that comparison when you put it in the snow and put it against something that truly is white. And then moving into it, the doors are new, of course, and then more billet aluminum work here with the Helderberg door handles, which are a very, uh, sexual feel, I guess we can say, because they have the finger grooves cut in. It is solid billet aluminum. Normally what you would see is a Puma door handle, which is plastic. While they're nice, these are much, much nicer and have a really good solid feel. 
And then of course, moving to the back where you'll see the soft top. Maxim had a, or actually it wasn't Maxim, Maximum was a hard top, but then we did another version that was a black soft top. And on this one, we did the tan soft top, which complements the interior really nice. And you'll notice a difference in the interior. Normally I do a, a a seat that's a little less aggressive. This is much more of a sport seat because Deramid promised me he's going to be doing a, some off-roading in this vehicle. So we talked about it and we decided he needed a seat that hugged him a little more. So when he's really doing the off-roading, it's, it's, it's going to give him that support that he wants. Everything has been wrapped in leather. So the top of the dash, the binnacle around the instrument cluster that were the Apple CarPlay's ad is all wrapped in dash, the lower dash, the door handles, or not the door handles, the door cards, everything is in, wrapped in leather. And then the color combo we did is a biscuit in black. But I did it in a little different way on this one where I did the tops of the seats in the biscuit, I did the center cubby in the black, and I did the dash all in black too to just kind of keep that rugged feel, but a simple feel. So a very monotone design on the interior, except for you know, the biscuit color with a little punch of color. And then it has the center facing bench seats in it. So being that this is lifted approximately almost three inches, it does have Fox shocks. It has a little different type of spring that we're trying that so far has been awesome. It has the proper radius arms. It has the proper, the prop shafts that are actually custom made because we need that extra little distance. So everything has been done specifically to make sure anytime we do a lift, it's done properly. We don't cut any corners on it. So this is Atlas, the D90 by Helderberg. Really can't say much more about it. Be sure and take a look at pictures, check it out, helderberg.com. And I'm sure we're gonna have some videos. So if you haven't found us on YouTube yet, definitely go over to YouTube, search for Helderberg because we have well over a hundred videos and we're constantly adding more videos, more reviews of the Defenders and also some cool gear that you might wanna have when you're driving your Defender.